today all this cannot be discussed right because it's overview of the session of machine learning i will cover only three four popular model with examples only right the basic definition and the examples what are them under supervised we will understand one or two classification method and the regression models popular model of classification and the regression any unsupervised we will study what is classic clustering process and what is dimensional reductions or say couple of examples of under you know k means clustering or say you know dimensional reduction process all these four technique of supervised and unsupervised we will study only through examples and the common overview let us go one by one let us start with the supervised learning first under supervised learning i told about you will have a label the dependent variable the output variable so that label will be one of the part of your data sets but that will define your model performance right like i told you right you have a data and say the y and then x1 x2 x3 kind of thing x4 different features are there right we don't call it independent variable sometimes we call it independent variable sometimes call it the features characteristics of your data but in the different data thousands of data suppose you have or hundreds of data so this is your label data this is your label data right label data so using this particular label data we will study the performance of your model so that will be used for your training and testing purpose all data will be like all this for say 70 percent will be used for training and the remaining 30 percent will be used for testing this label column will help you in measuring the performance of your model how accurate the model is doing or performing here you can see the cat right in supervised learning algorithms Algorithm label data sets are very important. These data sets consist of data points that have been explicitly assigned a category or a label. What kind of category? Like CAD. You want to identify the CAD image, right? That would be, there will be many images, but who, to, who is CAD and what are the features are there that will fall under the CAD category. So you can understand based on the features, based on the features, you can see whether it's a CAD or not, something kind of output or label decision variable can be taken. Similarly, spam mail. Spam mail, whether the spam or the original mail right genuine mail so that is the label variable but there are different features are that they are based on that features you take the decision this label serves as the ground truth of the learning process that we have discussed earlier during the training the model ingest the label data and analyze the relationship between the input features and the corresponding level between the input features and the corresponding level remember that is the core part of supervised learning so who is your label data and who are your you know input features that you have to identify based on this input feature and the label data you define your machine algorithm you ask the machine to develop a good relationship among them and then the machine will learn train the data and learn the algorithm and come up with the best prediction that's it through the iterative process the model adjusts the iterative internal parameters weights to improve the ability to predict the correct level of unseen data points unseen data points mean the testing next level this process is known as a model fitting you understood now common features like common popular supervised learning algorithms are the regression which you have discussed logistic regression i'll discuss in the next class the decision tree random forest super support vector machine there are many methods of supervised learning are there one or two definitions i'll cover but rest of entire introduction to machine learning or deeper machine learning i would recommend you to you know go through a good book that i have recommended in my list of predictive modeling predictive analytics and also you know you can learn in deeper of machine learning through different specific course of machine learning techniques right now since it, this course is a part of uh, majorly on business forecasting and the predictive analytics we are just giving the basic overview of machine learning process right what are the techniques what are the classifications are there now look at here the basic understanding is a regression right and here is a classification both falls under supervised learning but here you define yes or no category but here your regression you are fitting a line like you know dependent dependence are coming but here you are making a classification who will fall in this type who is fall on other type right yes or no die or survived kind of male female good customer bad customer these are the kind of different aspects and here is a you know, different common model the raw data and the feature extraction from the data features you do the feature instruction then train the model and feed the model based on your label output right and then new data feature extraction and, and this this part you know predict and through the label whether it's a yes no you know buy or don't buy whatever zero one kind of thing predictions will come and label the model and come up with the best prediction based on the you know confusion matrix or different prediction models are there which gives you or like major accuracy are there which provides you the accuracy of your model now as i mentioned 
for each of them i'll give one example first is the regression here you see regression say one example of supervised learning is the regression we have discussed detail of that single linear regression and multiple linear regression in single linear regression you have the basic definition of y equals to alpha plus say beta x right where x is the input and y is the output and you fit the based on the data sets you fit your model and check which model is giving better accuracy we best or square right or lower standard error so that is called basic regression and supervised model of regression when it comes to the multiple regression you have more than one variables independent variable y equals to alpha plus beta 1 x1 plus beta 2 x2 say here two independent variable are coming say age and academic performance or say in work experience and the academic performance both will help you in getting a placement so the y is your level value or say dependent variable so these dependent variables will suppose here you can see here is a blood pressure weight and height all these will define your say blood pressure so these are kind of to not to some extent or say age or high weight heavy weight can change your effect impact your blood pressure so the blood pressure is becoming suppose a level value dependent variable actual and predicted right and then you have a features weight and height suppose suppose example as i talked talked about say you know academic record will help you to get a placement or performance so there are different examples you can find which will help all this fall will under say basic regression of simple linear regression or multiple linear regression you can refer to the sessions of regression analysis we'll get detail of it now come to the classification type as i told about there are two way one is the regression another classification this is also to some extent supervised learning but it classify the data not exactly predict the value for a given x it does not predict the exact value of y rather it classify the data into binary kind of say 0 1 or classify the man woman like different type of you know different like whether give the loan or don't give the loan yes or no kind of thing classification are done that is also fall under supervised learning also but here you define the level right here you can see the in supervised learning classification of fundamental technique and the process are been given here you can define the class of the level which level it falls whether whether it's a good customer or the bad customer or whatever example you can think about right what are the techniques decision tree logistic regression random forest support vector machine knns algorithm knn algorithm name based method knn and support vector machine are more deeper more practical more interesting but basic definitions are you know basic methods are like logistic regression decision tree logistic regression is very important in in business forecasting also so we will cover detail of logistic regression in the next session but basic definition like decision tree random forest are also very popular machine learning techniques under supervised learning examples palm filtering sentiment analysis of text data whether it's a you know review if you are if you are reviewing a data whether it's a positive feedback negative feedback or neutral sentiment that also you can classify the data in three category positive say one negative say minus one or say it's a neutral say zero so this way you can define your data right yes no hold kind of thing and you can come up with the sentiment analysis of twitter data also when twitter data are available freely before elon musk took over the you know twitter data we used to do many data analysis based on the available data and we used to we used to come up with many recommendation system through our sentiment analysis process of twitter data as a part of machine learning so you know so this helps you in getting understand of uh, different type of classification method of supervised learning of machine learning so what is decision tree let, but let me summarize in to end enter aspects i have mentioned here but let me summarize the entire process through this graph in decision tree suppose you look, you will have to go for a bidding process right first you go for a bid or you don't go for a bid there may be suppose you want to play football or not whether there is a rain or no rain if there is a rain you might play the football but if there is no rain you can think about the temperature of the ground right if there is too high temperature say 45 degree 50 degree you may not play the football but if it is low temperature with wind windy weather is there you can play the football also so yes no different type of route you are creating of your decision making right that is called decision tree first whether you want to play football or not and whether temper based on the temperature or the weather so you are classifying the weather so this is called note sub tree sub tree and note so there are or say bidding process example that i was talking about you you go for a bidding for a new project from your company right and you go for your for a ipl player cricket player so you go for bid bid or no bid no bid means initially you are taking the decision but initially the final decision is whether you go for a bid or not that you will decide from the root end, end of the root from the leap node you will find take the final decision but it will be a reverse channel but how you are developing your new root that will come from the beginning this people define like this way also this way also 
people define this way also. Tree can be defined in this way, T can be defined in the you know vertical manner also. In different book, people use different flow of tree. But the first point are called the decision node. It is called the root node, root node, root node. And then intermediate subtree will come because you are taking a decision based on the yes, no, yes, no, temperature of the ground and the high temperature, low temperature, medium temperature, rainy weather. So these are different situations you are classifying the tree. And like, you know, if you go for a bidding, whether there is a computer or not, whether if there is a computer, what is the chance of that particular computer will come up with a bidding amount and then different competition will come. So you are dividing different route and finally you are taking a decision, right, whether you, go, you should hire the cricket player or not or, you know, go for the project or not. And you can do the market research also. So that will come inside in between whether if you do a market research, whether there is a oil or not or, you know, whether the gold on the or say, uranium are there or inside the or lithium is there in the ground or not in Kashmir. So that different example I'm talking about, right? A Bombay hub, there is oil or not, petroleum products there or not. That decision how will do? You do the survey. So that is an inter-decision process, right? You can put everything in your decision tree. So start, what starting point will be go for bidding or not. But over a period of time you do a marketing or you do a seismic survey and then based on that if the survey is positive you go for digging or bidding or if you do, otherwise you don't go for bidding. And then again there will be how many computers there are, what are the computers bidding price could be, you don't know. And accordingly you have to come up with a game planning. So all these things can be put on a decision tree and in a reverse manner you can take a decision and you can come up with a good decision making process. This is a supervised learning. Here you can see the general structure. You can see decision note will come as a root note, the first point, final decision. Intermediate steps will be derived from different branch, subtree. We call it a sub node, decision note or the subtree. And last note in each tree, you can see the last note, we call it as a leap note, leap note. So there is the final decision, yes, yes, no, suppose here it is no, suppose for example, yes, it could be yes, it could be no. So how many yeses are there, how many, based on that you can take a decision, majority. You can take a final decision or based on the final outcome, what could be the probability chance you can assign also and you can take the final decision over here, whether it's profitable or not, the bidding or the decision making. So this is all the decision tree. Look at here one example I have given, suppose hiring decision or your job performance, whether you want to take a job or not. Like right. suppose you got offer. So there are three root, three top terminology, root note, decision note and the leave note. Leave note will come in the end and root note will be in the top, right, or the beginning. The starting point where the initial decision is made based on the salary, offer below $50,000 leads to rejection. If the offer is less than, so annual offer say, less than say $50,000, for the sake of example, right, consider this. Then you reject the offer, otherwise you accept the offer. So this is the initial point. So suppose your offer, salary offer is less than say $50,000, you reject the offer. So decision tree ends there. That is your leave note, final note. You stop there and you take a decision in the root note. The decision has to be taken in the root note, first initial note. You have to go back and final decision you are taking there. But how you are creating your tree? So you stop there. But if the offer is more than 50,000, you have to accept the offer, right? But there also you can divide. Suppose yes, yes, offer is more than 50,000. You are not taking a decision, you are creating more root, more decision making, more branches of your decision making. What are them? That how much distance it is from my hometown so, or say, you know, from my location. Is it say, suppose you stay in heart of Bombay city or say Bangalore city or say Delhi city or say Chennai city. Then you take a decision. Is it far away from my location? If there is a nearby offer from my say, city center or say, you know, IT hub, why I should not take the offer from there rather than going four hours journey every day? So you take a decision say. So there also you are taking a decision in case you have more offers say. And then or say you know far away from your city you have to go to outside country. That also you can extend this example to any other example also. If it is nearby your country or say if you don't want to go to say, say US say. Suppose you want to settle in India. So then you take a decision whether the company is giving offer to India or in abroad. You take a decision similarly. And then suppose you know if yes then decline the offer. If it is a say, distance is too high or it's not giving the offer inside your country you don't take it. And then you take the decision, say, you know, or you can think about the, if it is a foreign offer, then you can go, it's up to you, right? And then again, this way you can classify, even if the offer, you know, offer has a free, like, you know, free offer, like, you know, say, incentives, some leaps, like additional leaps are there or not, like, you know, early kind of thing, or say, you know, additional holiday, holiday leaps, or say, kind of incentives are giving to you or not, tax benefits are giving there or not, or job opportunity are there or not, additional feature, career opportunity are there or not, that also you can put. Only offer each other, the money is not important, your career or the interest in the job, the type of work, that culture, that also very important. 
the brand of the company you can classify and one by one you can take the offer final decision will come automatically you will get a decision and that will be a final root of your decision making so this way decision tree are been defined there are many examples which you can use look at it's a benefits of the it's a structure approach it provides a transparency it provides a flexibility in taking decision making because all options you are actually examining and you are the best option will come as a final root of your decision making that's it but remember three component who is root node root node is the initial point from where your decision making starts and who is leaf node the final decision making point the last point of your tree they are the leaves are there they are you are taking the final they are you are getting the offer and that you can take to a final decision making through your decision node or the branch and then you take the final decision next the random forest imagine there are many application of random forest or many way of defining i will define the most effective or the most easiest way of defining the machine learning technique supervised machine learning technique of random forest what is that effectively in the previous slide we have discussed the decision tree one tree the one decision making one final offer or final decision making right but you have only one tree that you have a branch of the tree but it is ultimately one tree right you have taken a decision based on the sample data or the decision making process but random forest is nothing but you are entering from a tree to a forest you are entering from a tree to into a forest there are many tree are there many tree are there many tree are there and based on the majority of the forest majority of the community your decision will come not only from the one tree you take the decision you enter into the domain you enter into the community take a different opinion of the people and then you take the decision that is called the forest random forest why random because you shuffle the data or main data the main data you have right main data you shuffle into different bag different sample random sample and from each you de develop a tree and you take a decision and take a decision then you might say there are so many decisions finally because each tree will provide suppose you develop 10 tree then you have a trained decision making right in each of the tree you can take a own decision you can use some decision making process in the set that tree also you are you are open there is flexibility to take a decision inside your tree also whatever the method of machine learning or different techniques programming technique you can use right but ultimately you take a decision from one tree then from another tree based on the different sample because you change the sample size like in a size may be same or maybe or even change the size sample or size also but you are taking a different data right data may be overlapping options are there but you are taking different data not the same sample and you are taking another decision like suppose who will win the upcoming general election nd or nd jod say or who will be the pm say so therefore you can take a decision you can take a sample based on the large sample you take couple of sample random sample and then from the random sample you develop one tree based on the opinion and the strategy and one decision will come then again another tree another decision will come whether you take the offer or not job offer different type of in illustration you can do now when you have a 10 tree 10 decision making comes based on the random sample data so what is the final decision then here you take the majority among the 10 tree if say seven tree says yes and four tree say no then your final decision of your random forest is yes because there is a majority of yes if say seven people say as a six people say no this product is not good and say four people say this product is not good or say bad or is good so you take a decision where is the majority so this is called the random forest and the majority through decision making process it is just extension of decision tree in decision tree here is the example you can see look at here the definition the primary objective of random forest algorithm is to classify the data into distinct group using multiple decision tree classify the data look at classify the data the main objective the main priority of you know primary objective of random forest algorithm is nothing but you learn the one decision tree technique then or method or the process you extend it to multiple sample the data and use different decision tree different tree in your forest and based on that you take a decision based on the majority classify the data into different class like different sample as i said sample and then based on the distinct groups using a multiple decision tree you take the final decision here you can see the example look at here your main sample you have classified into sub samples different random sample and you take one tree decision tree here 
final decision, what is the outcome of this tree? If these are the branch, intermediate decision tree branch I told, right? And these are the leaf node. And these are the final decision. What is the final decision here, say? The customer is loyal. Look at the example. Customer consider e-commerce company interested in predicting customer charm. Whether the customer will leave the store or the service or the customer will remain there with you. So this you want to study based on the customer past purchase behavior of the customer. So that you study what about the model machine learning model you can use or the techniques that you can use, you do. Supervised, unsupervised, you do whatever, right? Classification, clustering, regression, whatever you want to do, you do it. Re logistic regression. Then association rule, ABC classification, whatever you want to do, do. Based on that, you take a decision whether customer will leave the store or it will be there. The charm rate you want to calculate for a customer, right? Or for in general. So then you can see, collect the data from the various features of his customer, such as demographic, usage pattern, customer service in interaction. So all these things will be a feature, right? Look at that. And then based on that, you label the data, the customer will churn or not. This is the decision making, final decision making, the label data, right? The churn, customer will churn or not. So now, data sets, you can divide the data into part, then subset the data and classify into different subset, sample, and then train the data through decision tree and take the decision interval prediction from the each decision tree, finally what? Based on that, from each decision tree, suppose you have a three decision tree here, say. Three decision. One is the loyal, loyal, fraud. But where is the majority? Loyal has the majority. So final decision of your random forest is the customer will be loyal. That customer will not leave the store. That is what random forest. This gives, this is a super set, this is a super decision making, more powerful decision making than the decision tree. Because decision tree is based on the one sample, decision tree and the outcome of decision tree comes. There might be a less of less prediction in terms of final accuracy because it's all about prediction. Based on the training and testing data, you are coming up with the algorithm, prediction model. You set up the model. Then for the new customer, when you apply it, it has to be a accurate model, right? The accuracy level should be very high. Then only company will adopt your model, right? Because you are the data scientist. You based on the data, you fit the model. So therefore, in this process of machine learning, of supervised learning, only decision tree people use, but random forest is much more powerful because, because here you take the majority opinion. Not only from one tree you take a decision, you enter into the forest and you take the decision of many trees and then the majority comes up as the final decision making. That's the benefit of random forest. Here you can see the advantages. The unseen data point you can take and then you know majority vote comes and the final decision is that whoever, wherever the majority belongs, that is your final decision making. You don't take any decision. Based on the majority, it come up with the prediction, right? This is what the random forest. So far, we have discussed the supervised learning concept and two, three example of it, right? The methods of machine learning or algorithms we have discussed. Now, let us discuss a little bit about the unsupervised learning techniques also. So, the first, what is unsupervised learning? I have already discussed basic difference between supervised and unsupervised, but understand through layman examples here. The basic difference between the supervised and unsupervised learning is that it will have unlabeled data sets. In supervised learning, what do you do? You define y upon x. You have a supervised learning, whether it is a value or it is a label data, right? Label data. So this is what your supervised learning. But in unsupervised learning, you will not have any label data, only, only the feature data. And based on this data, you classify the data, you segregate the data, you put cluster the data, you do the factor analysis that data belongs to which category. Is it a children or adult? Is it a man or woman? It is a this community or that community? It is a employee or outside customer? So this type of classifications are done or to some extent in the clustering are done. We should not use the word classification, rather we should say it is a clustering are done based on the features data, unlabeled data, no label variable, the output variable or the supervised the decision variables the which are been derived or explained by the independent variable concept of regression and the classification will not be there. Whether it is a value or label value, that is fine, but that is used only for supervised learning. In unsupervised that y part, the dependent variable part, the label variable part will not be there. The explained relationship will not be there. Only the features data, independent data, only features data. You classify them, you cluster them, segregate them and come up with the different data behavior pattern which will help you in taking decision specifically in the industry of understanding consumer behavior, data pattern, different category that you can understand and accordingly you can take a decision. 
that falls under unsupervised learning. You might say that then how the machine comes over here. Here also you have different technique, different algorithm through which you can classify the data. One or two I will discuss, but you can understand the importance of unsupervised learning where you do not have the dependent variable or label data, but only unlabeled data, only features are there. Based on that itself you can take a decision. You can come up with a good interpretation about the data pattern. Look at here, you have a mixed data here, right? And then you do the classification or you can say the segregate the data and different type of, you can, you do not know how we will do that, right? Machine will understand the data pattern through centroid method, through k-means clustering. So, dimensional reduction system will come up with different, you know, kind of clustering or factor analysis. Based on that, they will segregate the data into different category. Look at the category. So, nice of category can be done through machine learning of unsupervised learning algorithms and which will help you or the company to take a decision. How many people fall under this category? How many people are buying more product? How many people are buying less product but how with high volume? How many product people are regular? All these things classification can be done, right? This is the advantage of unsupervised learning. The goal of unsupervised learning algorithm is to uncover the inherent pattern, inherent pattern and the structure within this data without explicit guidance. System will learn and system will come up with the best, you know, segregation of the data, clustering of the data. Clustering is one of the most important technique which is being used as a part of unsupervised learning to facilitate the data and the exploration of the pattern and the structure within the data sets. Because here you have only the features data, you do not have any level data, right? Dimension reduction technique is one of the method which is very popular where you might have many features, right? Many features you have. But you cannot use all these features and analyze them, right? You reduce the dimension, reduce the number of features through intermediate process like transformation, all these things. And then you take a decision and come up with a better prediction because you can handle that important features rather than taking all these features. And then you can come up with a better prediction that is called dimensional reduction. There are many examples like, you know, of unsupervised learning like market segmentation, anomaly detection, recommendation system, all these falls under to some extent unsupervised learning application. Now, let us understand the basic two basic concept. One is the clustering, say k means clustering, that examples only, and say, say you know, dimensional reduction, right? Principal component analysis. That's two basic popular methods we will discuss. There are many methods like agglomeratic clustering, DB scan, FCM, GMM, there are many methods are there. We will understand the basic k means clustering, which is very popular, and the dimensional reduction. In dimensional reduction, there are also many methods, but we will focus only on, say, you know, principal component analysis. Now, in clustering, you can understand, you cl classify the data into different classes, right? And different cluster you get. Look at here, how the data can be clustered into different partitions, so cluster 1, cluster 2, cluster 3, this way. But all these techniques are done through centroid process. Look at here, suppose here you have a data and different sample data and based on that, what will be your k value, number of clustering, right? What will be the number of clustering, the k selection? that you can do through your initially you randomly define say one cluster, two cluster and then based on that you, you know, do, do your centroid classification like distance from the data sets, distance from the data sets, distance from the data sets, distance from the data sets and check who is giving most suitable distances, like minimum distances, Euclidean distance you can use and then you come up with your base selection. The first step is that, you know, look at the elbow. where how many classification you want to do? One classification, there is no cl clustering then, right? Only one group you are taking about. Then you take two group and you see like you know how many clusters like data are being featured and what is the distance among all of them, whether it is the best cluster or not or overlapping are coming or not. Then you take one more like you know clustering say 3.123 say, now you have created a three cluster say. And based on three cluster you have seen the distances from the different other points to these three clusters are less. So, after that you can do 4 cluster, k equals to 4 also you can decide through the algorithm, through the central distance process and then from the different, from all the data. Now, instead of 2, now you are considering 4, right? 1, 2, 3, 4 and then you decide the centroid of all of them, centroid of all of them which will be your main point and the distance from them and after that the centroid will also be moving centroid, right? It is not fixed. At a later stage it will be fixed, but you do not know who will be the final center point of each cluster. So, now this process you do, iterative process of distance from all and then segregate the data, just move and finalize, you know, who could be becoming the best cluster. So, once look at the, the elbow process, we call it here, after certain point of class, like in you know, a clustering finalization, 
like number of cluster finalization, you will see there will be no distance, no ma major differences are coming. The distance almost fixed or no classification for the group you are not able to create. So once you, you can put your threshold value, once you realize that there, there is no further classification or the clustering are been not possible, almost segregation or the different clusters are been done, the patterns are been identified, you stop there. So K is selected, K is selected there. Once K is selected, you put the data into different category and take your decisions and you know develop a decision and centroid process you can use and the distances among them you can find and who could be your major representative of each cluster that also you can do using the centroid process. The detail analysis you can refer through different uh, book and you can get to know about the k-means clustering but here you can see one example. Right. K-means clustering is an unsupervised learning technique that identifies the groups, the clusters of similar data points within the unlabeled data set. That is the first part. There will be no label data. All are unlabeled. All are features. Based on that, you are doing different type of features classification, right? Like say children, adult, senior, the groups are you are developing, right? Children, adult, senior. So this different groups you are creating through clustering process. But initially you have a data. So what do you do? You just take any point, define your k value and see the who could be the best cluster whether k equals to 1, k equals to 2, k equals to 3 and take the distances over them, throw centroid distances. Always you try to find the distance for each point that you have found and you check who is the best cluster, what is the best cluster. Once that is done, k means clustering are done and that will give you and then the data falls under this group because you have classified the data, centroid distance are been finalized and based on that you do the features analysis and you see what type of customer, what type of people, what, whatever the example you want to do, recommendation system you can do, suppose these data fall under the senior customers. So you can now make a recommendation to this, the email id, the contact details are there with you and you can write a mail to them, sir or madam you buy this product suitable for you, for the children's you can provide them chocolate facility or kind of you know different type of toy you can provide or the recommendation you can provide, right. For the adult, you can put the detail, different type of shirts, pants, all these things you can, you know, different type of makeup products you can provide to them also. So the advantages you get from the classification or say clustering process under unsupervised learning. There is no level, no expand relationship you are defining, right? But here, based on the features data, unlabeled data, you are doing a, doing a cluster. Different, there are many methodic factor analysis also you can do also here. But we are not focusing that, we are just focusing the basic k-means clustering. Example, you can see a retail company want to analyze their customer data, purchase history, demography, etc. to understand their behavior and the customer pattern. Base, K-means clustering can be used to do that. You can define three clusters, say, you know, budget conscious, home improvement and the high spender. And based on that K-means clustering, you know, in the algorithm process, the centroid distance uh, minimization process and finalizing the base centroid, this three cluster you can find budget conscious, say, so for example, say, home improvement and say high spender. You can think about the, these are the high spender, these are the budget conscious and there's the home improvement. Whatever the example you can fit and you can come up with the outcome and the recommendation system, enhance customer satisfaction, target segmentation, the sales marketing also you can do based on this understanding the data we have the pattern. This is the advantage of K-means clustering. This is not a supervised, it is a unsupervised learning because there is no level, no supervised causal relationship are being developed here. Now the last part, last model that we want to add as a part of basic information of unsupervised learning that is called dimension reduction. Why dimension reduction is popular? Because in general what happens because in these days too much of transactions or too much of data are available in our day to day life, right? Every day huge amounts of data are been, been gathered, whether it is a social media, whether it is a Facebook, whether it is a Instagram, whether it is a YouTube, Google or you know daily transactions of your different company, more data are being stored there. In that case what happens? There will be many features. Forget about label data, we are not discussing only the features data, there will be many features, many column of your data, many column of your data, maybe hundreds of columns will be there. Can you take all of them and analyze the data and understand the data behavior, etc. Sometimes it becomes very difficult. So in that case what happens, people use dimension reductions. So among the data, who are the most important? You are not selecting them only, you are not filtering them and rest you are not discussing. That is called feature engineering. That we are not discussing, but here also interrelationship among the multicollinearity, we are not discussing them. Here we are seeing that among the data, suppose you have a hundred data points, the column, among them we will find, the system will find some, you know, conversion of the data and the new level will come, new features will come through latent analysis, variable classification through to some extent covariance matrix 
and eigen value the majority will be decided and then you can reduce the dimension from 100 from 100 dimension to say 10 dimension this new dimension you are developing but this 10 dimension you can define as a latent variable intermediate variables who will have a new data sets none of this data direct data will come here none of this direct data may come may not come generally does not come here it will be new, new data sets new component like you know you take a data set say data and you take a ln logarithm right so if you take ln say logarithm of the data what happens you get a new data right? data transform these data sets transform into ln ln data right it is a scale you are changing the scale same logic here so this transformation will not be the same data sets you have a new data component so these transform transform data with 10 component will represent the entire data sets you don't take this data into your final decision making or the analysis process you take this data this because it is easy it has been reduced with dimension and this does not reduce the generality of the original data that is the advantage of dimensional detection inter part is a clear mathematical analysis first to you know define the covariance matrix and the first you normalize the data and then normalize the data all the features data you normalize each of them by subtracting you know mean and x minus mean we say mean by sigma and for each data you do that and then do the covariance matrix covariance matrix of the all the data sets and then you define eigen value calculate the eigen value the eigen vector and then do the majority of them and then you finalize your number of how many like in you know, a cumulative data sets you will define that how many values or new dimensions will be the in your final decision making process suppose 100 will come or say 20 will come back to 8 100 will come back to 15 or say 10 good now you have only 10 now out of 100 or say 150 and now these tens the dimension could be different the data point could be different but through this process first you normalize and then you calculate the covariance data and then uh, like you know Kelly Hamilton equation like you know calculate the lambda and the corresponding eigen values and you do the measurement like cumulative values of them how many eigen values will have a higher weight as a first 10 will take the 95 percent of your data the data features that take stop there 99 percent stop the remaining 15 20 or say out of 30 data they will take only 2 3 percent do not take that if the new data new eigen factor that you found based on that you take your final uh, dimension say first say 7 8 9 10 will take care of the 90 percent of the data behavior stop there and take that based on your cutoff point stop there, take that new dimension data to your final analysis and take the decisions your generality look at that preserves the essential information your you are not changing the generality the original behavior of the data that remains there but in the intermediate process you are reducing the dimension by converting into a new scale that is what the dimension detection there are many methods like principal component analysis PCA and LDL linear discriminant analysis there are many AT, SNE there are many methods are there but you know PCA is very popular let me explain that I have already explained but you know we have a data sets with the following features each individual very basic example I am sharing with the dimensional reduction through PCA principal component analysis what is that suppose height one feature look at the features how many features you have data let me see height and then weight and then say gender and then say income and then say education level right how many features you have five features suppose it's a too big suppose and you want to reduce the dimension you use your PCA the process as I told first you convert the data into normalization process right and then first you do the normalization of the data say data and then call, consider the covariance matrix big covariance matrix among the, all the data sets after normalization normalize you are changing the scale right normalize then the covariance data sets and then you calculate the eigen value like, like you know and then next next step you calculate your eigen value of the data through Kelly Hamilton equation, then the eigen vectors you calculate for each eigen value, for each eigen value you calculate the highest eigen vector and then you calculate your cumulative value say you know by summation of these data sets like percentage of presence 
the, the weight. Based on that, you define your number of dimension. That will be the final dimension reduction value or the final dimension new data, new scale. And that will go to your final decision making and the recommendation system and overall process. Here you can see, you have five features here, right? Suppose we have done the dimension reduction and we have come up with the two dimension here. Out of five, now we'll take two. None of them are coming as individual, but we have categorized into two components. What is the first components? Suppose interpretation. First components might be represented the combination of height and weight. Height and weight will give you one new dimension and what is the gender, income and educational level will give you another dimension. So, we have two dimensions. Dimension one is here and another say here. What are them? New latent variable you are getting, right? What are them? Intermediate variable you are getting. What are them? New dimension. What is one is the say it is a you know, body size. Let me delete this. You can see one dimension you have kept new dimension say overall body size, right? intermediate variable one of your dimensional reduction and another you are defining say the second principal component might be say culture combination of say income, education and representative yeah, gender may help you in defining your economic status, socio-economic status. So, now you have developed, you have reduced the dimension from the five features to two features. One is the overall body size. Now, you are not considering weight and height you are considering the body size as one feature, as one dimension, one intermediate variable which will help you in taking a decision about your final data sets and come with the recommendation or whatever the decision you want to take. And the another dimension, another variable, intermediate variable that you have found, what is that? The socio-economic status. Remember, gender, education and the income are not using now, you are not using. But the two variables that you have developed through dimension reduction, the overall body size. Maybe some, some new parameter, new variable, new no number will come. But you are not losing the generality of height weight. But the body size will represent the representative of original data height and weight. Now, in this body size, the new variable that you have taken, take that as one principal component. The another principal component could be socio-economic status, which is a combination of these three. Through this, you know, mathematical process of dimension reduction, you follow and come up with your another dimension, principal component, principal component that is called socio-economic status. Now, you have two principal components, one is the body size and the socio-economic status. Remember, it is easy to predict, discuss in the, in the platform or the discussion panel or wherever and you can take a decision also. This helps, just example I am giving, this helps the process of dimension reduction. Here I have given only one basic layman examples. But when you go to the deeper of machine learning and dimension reductions, the entire process, you will understand the entire steps of uh, dimension reduction, the calculation of dimension reduction in Python you won't understand because just you put and then you will get the, select the you know feature and you get to know the outcome of the dimension reduction. But here I have tried to give the basic explanation with little technical steps and the layman understanding of dimension reduction. This helps you in taking, like when you have a large amount of features, na, characteristics, data sets, it is very difficult to handle everything, all of them and to take a decision. You reduce the dimension and go for final decision making or prediction or recommendation or whatever analysis you want to do further, you can do that. This is a part of unsupervised learning, part of your to some extent dimension reduction and cl clustering process. This are the two method that I thought of discuss as a part of your unsupervised learning. What is that? K-means clustering and principal component analysis or say dimension reduction. Under, so, what we have discussed today, let us summarize now. We have discussed now the basic definition of machine learning applications and the overall aspects and then the, the terminologies of machine learning and then two categories, supervised and unsupervised. Under supervised, we have discussed regressions, detail. Next class, we will discuss the logistic regressions. We have discussed the application of them. We have discussed decision tree and under classification and random forest. Now, un under unsupervised learning, there are many methods. Two popular we have discussed with the example, basic example. One is the clustering, k-means clustering. Another is the principal component analysis as a part of dimension reduction. There are many more methods, but overall, this is what the overview of machine learning algorithms or machine learning techniques or introduction to machine learning. 
But if you go deeper of all of them with the techniques, applications, coding, etc., that will give you the further boost of machine learning, introduction to machine learning or the confidence in machine learning techniques. But we are not discussing that because our objective is to give the basic information or the basic overview of machine learning algorithms as a part of predictive analytics and as an overview of under the umbrella of business forecasting. More detail you can learn through different sessions or different courses of machine learning techniques. With that, let us conclude today's session of overview of or introduction of machine learning. In the next class, we will elaborate the logistic regression in detail with the example. Thank you.